Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can send um, one-time events with Kotlin channels. So a common problem you face in your projects is that you use live data or state flow. And when you have, for example, an error message you want to display, and that event that triggers that error message is sent through live data or through state flow, that means that when you rotate your device, it will fire off again. So if you show a snack bar, it will show again. If you show toast, it will also show again. But these types of events are actually one-time events. So we don't want to see multiple snack bars after an error message. And a common solution to this problem was to create a custom event class um, that just handles this event. And that was a class you needed to wrap around your actual data. And that worked. I use that in my project, uh, but with Kotlin channels, you can actually do that uh, much easier and more beautiful. So in this video, I will show you how you can do that. We will build a very, very simple application here. When we click on that button, a snack bar will pop up. <laughs> that is not, nothing special, but essentially what happens here is when we click on this button, we trigger a function in a view model, and that view model will send an event through our channel and in our activity, we will then observe on these events so that when we get such an event, we can then show the snack bar. And you can see when I showed the snack bar here and then rotate the device, it won't pop up again, but with live data or state flow, it would. So you actually only need an empty Android Studio project and those for dependencies for coroutines and coroutine scopes and also this build features block for view binding. Both of that you will be able to find in my GitHub repository in this video's description. So to start, we want to simply go to activity main XML, take this text view and just replace it with a button. Whoops, just a simple button, give it an ID of a button show snack bar and change the text to show snack bar. Then we can go to activity main, or main activity rather, set up view binding here, private light and var binding of type activity main binding. Initialize it here like this. And then simply replace this stuff here with binding that root. So that's it. Now we can actually create our view model. Let's go to our root package, right click new Kotlin class, call that main view model, and simply let that inherit from view model, of course. Usually, when you have such events that you want to send to your activ activity or fragment, then you have a sealed class in which you declare all these different types of events you have because different events might need different data that you want to attach to these, to these events. And that's what I will do here, just a sealed class, call that my event. You can call that whatever you like. And in here I will create a data class for my error event. And well, if you have more events, you just put in more data classes or objects in here but I will just leave this simple class here and give it a message property. So we can actually attach an error message here. And of course, inherit from my event. The next step is to actually create our channel. So in case you don't know what a channel actually is, so in a nutshell, that is really just something you can send something into and you can receive something out of. So you can see we can just create a private val event channel here and just set that to a channel here. And each channel must be of a specific type. We first want to import that from the coroutines library. And here as the type of this channel, we will now specify my event because all these objects we send into this channel and we get out of this channel are all of this um, class my event. So 
if you have more of these classes in here, then you can send all these classes in this event channel here. And then we need to call the constructor here. And that's already it. Now we created a channel. And when we now create a function to actually send something into that channel, that uh, let's call that trigger event. In your real project, that could, for example, be just doing a network call and you want to handle the error, but you only want to show that error message once, then you would use such a channel here. But for this simple example, I will just call it trigger event and we will just send such an example error event through this channel. And because channels are based on coroutines, we need to also launch a coroutine here in view model scope. And in here, all we want to do is we want to send an instance of this error event class with our message together into this channel. So in our main activity, we can then observe on these events. So whenever we send something into this channel, we want to get something out of it in main activity and then distinguish between all these event classes we have here. And that is very easy to do. We just use our event channel and call send. And that is also a suspend function as you can see here. So that blocks the coroutine um, as long as it sends that event. And we want to send an error event. And we just attach this is an error or whatever. And well now, we don't have anything here in this view model um, we can actually access from our main activity because this event channel is private as you can see. We could already use this event channel directly here, as you can see, um, to observe on all these events. So if we would call consume each, then in this block, this block would fire off every time this send function is called. So whenever we call send, we can also consume these events in that channel. So you can see we get an, a my event here. And in this consume block, we could then distinguish between all of these events we sent into this. But we of course don't want to do this in the view model, instead in our main activity. And we also don't want to expose a channel object here. That's why I made this private. Instead, we want to convert this channel to a flow because with flows, we just have some more options um, when it comes to transforming these events. So we will have a public val here called event flow. And that will just be event channel dot receive as flow. It's really that easy. If you don't know what a flow is, then you can check out this video here um, where I explain that. But for this purpose here, it's really um, the same as I showed you with that event. So we will just have um, a callback function that gets fired whenever we send an event in this channel. So we can now go back to main activity. And here we can then, first of all, of course, initialize our view model. Um, private latent var view model of type main view model. Um, then we initialize that here. It's equal to view model provider. Pass the context, or rather the lifecycle owner, and call that get, and specify the type of view model we have here. And now with that view model, um, we can access that event flow we actually created. So that is of course of type flow, and how do we now consume that flow? If you're familiar with flows, then you know that we need to call dot collect. So that collect function for flows is just the equivalent to the consume each function for events that I showed you before. And we get an error here because that's a suspend function. And we need to just launch a crew here in lifecycle scope dot launch when started. So once our lifecycle is in the started state, we launch our flow, or rather we listen to these events that are sent in that channel and at the same time in that flow. You can see we get these here. So we can give these a name of event. And here we can then just use a when expression. So depending on the event we have here, we just want to do something different. So we only have one type of event, which is 
um, array event, I think I called it, yes. And then we can just execute the code that we want to execute when this event is actually sent here in this channel. Um, so because Colin has the smartcast feature, instead of that block, we already know that this is an error event, so we can access the error message directly without needing to cast anything. So we can directly show our snack bar dot make um, pass binding dot root for the view. We want to pass the event dot message here as a message and snack bar length long dot show. So in the end, it's actually the same procedure as you have with live data or state flow. Um, you just fire off an event in your view model and you observe it in your activity of fragment. That's really everything about it. Just that you use live data or state flow to represent a real state in your activity and fragment. Um, and that state should persist even if you rotate the device. You want those information from that, from that state object when you rotate the device. And channels are just to fire off one-time events like showing a snack bar. So the last step here is just to set an on-click listener to our button and just call view model dot trigger event when we click on that button. So then when we click on this button, we call this trigger event function, we launch a coroutine in view model scope, and in that we just send this error event object inside of our event channel, and this event flow is just this channel as a flow. And back in main activity, we then have this collect function that gets called when something is sent into this channel. And in here, we can then just check if we got an error event. And if so, we just want to show the snack bar. So let's launch our app, try that out. There we go. Click on that button, the snack bar appears. And if we rotate the device, then it won't appear again. But we can still trigger this event as often as we like, but it won't persist on screen rotation. So that was it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please give it a like and comment below. Also, if you're looking for more advanced Android tutorials, then check out my website, first link in this video's description, where you will find more advanced Android premium courses. And with the discount code philip 15 you will get 15% off of all my courses there. I wish you an awesome day. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next video. Bye bye.